What's going on, everyone? It's the Nisco. Welcome back to Resident Evil Remake. We're still going on with Chris's story, and we're going to explore more of the mansion today. Into this door. There really aren't that many differences between, you know, Jill's scenario and Chris's scenario. There are... Story-wise, it's completely different. Gameplay-wise, eh, somewhat completely different. Layout-wise, nothing has changed. I mean, some of the items might be different because Jill and Chris get completely different items. Like, uh, in this case, Jill got the grenade launcher, Chris doesn't. And I think that's the only difference. Oh, wait. There is a special item that Chris gets. He doesn't get to keep it, which makes no sense. But, um, get to that when we get to that. That's kind of, that's a little bit of a teaser for you. If you need a map of the mansion, there's one up here. Don't forget to get it. And back here is a trap. It's going to teach you how to use defensive items if you didn't pick up that first dagger. But, um, yeah, this is a trap. Oh, look at that terrible compression. Look at that. That's so disgusting. How could they get away with this? Now, there is a way to get past this zombie. Oh, but I wasn't able to trick him out. If you don't want to use a defensive item in this scenario, if you get really close to him and he lunges after you, as soon as he misses, his animation takes a few seconds to get uh, reset. So you could technically run up, he lunges for you, and you can just run past him. Uh, there are some small, subtle touches of horror, my personal favorite being in this room. Uh, take a listen about right here. Playing alone in a dark room and just, you know, pushing around, looking for items all over the place, and then suddenly something hits the window. That's pretty ingenious. That was a very nice touch. Kudos to Capcom. Under here is some handgun ammo, just in case you need it, and for Chris's scenario, you will need it. And I believe in this next room, we'll be getting into his other main mechanic, the one that I don't like. After playing through kiss Kisses, after playing through Chris's scenario again, I've noticed that it, gameplay-wise, it's still really, really good. It's just... Uh, the things they added weren't that good. Like this. To add extra difficulty, this zombie does not die in a cutscene. And this is one of the main changes right here, the old key. Since Chris does not get a lockpick, you have to look around the entire mansion and find old keys to unlock doors, such as this one, which could have been opened by the lockpick, but since we got the old key, we can now unlock it. Now, the old keys are actually strategically placed where if you need one, if there's a door close to the section of the mansion you're in, if you need an old key, chances are in one of the other rooms really close to it is one that you can use. So they are strategically placed. That doesn't change the fact that they're really freaking annoying to find and then unlock the doors. Now, the good thing about this is after you find five old keys and use five old keys, you will never need them again. Which is to say, the first section when you're in the mansion, as soon as you leave the mansion the first time, you never have to worry about old keys again. So, I guess that's okay. That's a nice trade-off, but it still adds a lot of extra time. And hello, Pop Scare! Yeah, that would probably get some of you if I wasn't talking the entire time. Now, if you were actually playing Jill Scenario, you could get the shotgun early. But, since there's no one here to help me... I would just die trying to get the shotgun right now. If you haven't played it, I won't spoil anything else for you. Oh, just... Oh, this... These lines. Oh, Chris is turning into a barcode every time he runs. Uh, something you can do to kind of fool the AI of zombies is... Uh, they do a different attack while on the stairs. They actually vomit acid for some reason. 
But uh, they don't do it right away, so if you want to run past them, get them on the stairs and then run around them. Alright, here's your inventory. These item boxes are connected throughout the whole game. Except in the alternate difficulty mode, Real Survivor, where they're not. But we won't worry about that. Instead, I'm just going to ditch the knife because I don't need it. And over here, we have another old key. So that means we're going to need it here soon. Uh, I have everything? Yes. Right there was a gas canister, and that's used to burn zombie corpses. Because in this Resident Evil, when you kill a zombie, they can come back again. So the dead walk twice. It's... Kind of, I really love the addition of the Crimson Heads, and that could have been easily avoided. Get off. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Get off. I am not going to die today. I haven't died for a very long time in Resident Evil. At least not on purpose. So if you want to kill zombies, it's a good strategy, but you'll have to deal with them later. This is why I say a pacifist run is pretty much your best choice when playing through this version of Resident Evil. Uh, after a few times going through... <laughs> okay, I forgot about that. That can also happen sometimes. Well-placed shots can earn you a headshot. And if you shoot down with a powerful enough weapon, if you aim down at their legs, you can get a leg shot, which is exactly the same as a headshot. Now, I'm actually going to show off the gasoline here, because you do not want these zombies to come back as Crimson Heads. They're twice as fast, twice as deadly. And I think the trigger for Crimson Heads, because it takes a while for them to change over, I think it depends on how many times you go through doors. Uh, think of going through a door as a, passage, uh, as a passage of time. So let's say 30 time passings a zombie will turn into a crimson head. And it also depends on what section of the mansion you're in. Like, these guys, they probably won't change for a very long time. So, I'm not even gonna chance it. I'm gonna burn it. Oh, wow. Oops. I didn't think I'd get burned there. And did I... I got... Did I get both of them? Well, that saved me some time. And if you leave a room and come back and the corpses are gone, you don't have to deal with them. So I'm going to go back to my inventory and switch out some items. Alrighty then. Let's move right along and get some more items. A lot of doors where there's only one way to go through, but as soon as you unlock it, you can go back and forth. And I actually uh, switched my difficulty off screen. I showed off um, what this game considers easy mode because the, of the two options at the beginning when you start a brand new game you get easy mode and hard mode I went for normal and for all my playthroughs you're going to see me just go through normal because that is the that's the in between because easy you get twice as many items if you're on hard you get less and less items to make it really really hard on you and did I forget an item uh, did I? Mm, I hope I didn't. But, well, uh, I'll go back for it if I did. In here is an item I don't think a lot of people tend to get because it's kind of useless. If you grab that, uh, what is this? The wooden, the wooden thing? <laughs> I'm not even going to use proper words. And you light this fire, you can get a map of the second floor. It's really kind of stupid, but no, whatever, I'll take it. If I can show something else off. Hooray! More to the map that I don't need to use! And I'm actually going to... Uh, should I use this right now? Yeah, what the heck. There will be more! Now that I'm done faffing about and causing a ruckus up in this here mansion, I need to start getting some items and exploring more. Loading screen. If you've never played a Resident Evil game, going through doors, it may seem really boring, and it is, but going through doors counts as the loading screen. 
And it's actually funny because in the DS version of this game, the uh, DS port of the PlayStation game, you can skip the door scenes because it's on a cartridge and not a disc. Which I thought was pretty cool. Makes for a much quicker game. Uh, oops. I did forget an item. Ah, I know what I'm missing. Okay, I will be right back. It was in this room. I forgot this. The dog whistle. And in here is a crumpled memo telling you where to use the dog whistle. And even giving you a visual, which is a very nice gesture. If you care to read this and any of the other uh, files that I'm going to be picking up, I'm just going to skip through. If you want to read them, be sure to pause and continue reading. Okay. So, I am... Uh, can I, uh, I can't decide. It's one of those where I know the layout, but there's multiple ways to get to where I want to be. I'm just trying to think of which is the easiest way to get to. kind of happens a lot in these kind of explorey Resident Evil games, like 1, 2, uh, sometimes 3, but a lot of the Resident Evil games, like 0, uh, 4, uh, 0 was kind of spread out. You could do what you want, but eventually it led you on point A to point B kind of setup. 4 was straight straight through from beginning to end. 5 does the exact same thing, and 6, the less I talk about 6, the better. It's not that I hate six. It's just like, cool. It's like five, but they fixed things. It's like one big patch. Cool. But I'm not gonna talk about that anymore, or else we'll get in, get into a big debate, and nobody will be happy. By the way, here's where you need to use the next old key. And that one is actually placed specifically for this room. Yeah, the, the one you get in the first save room, you can use it for this door, which I tend to use because the one door it's supposed to be used for, you can't get there yet. So I just tend to use it here. Now out here, you need to use the dog whistle, and oh, you can call it... Oh! I could have sworn dog whistles were used to make dogs go away from you because of the frequencies. But, hey, he's got a shiny around his neck. I want that shiny, and I want you to get off. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny to, uh... I don't know if you can do it. I should try that sometime. I want to see if I can use a defensive item, the uh, flash grenade, on a dog. I want to see a dog explode. And it's really funny when you use a flash grenade on an enemy, and these guys, uh, we're just wrestling right now. If you use a flash grenade on an enemy, they will stand there where you shove the grenade in their mouth. They will just sit there and then explode. It's hilarious. Now, don't use your healing item for this battle. You don't have to worry about it because there's green herbs right here. Use them and you should be fully healed. And all of that for this. A collar. Cool. So what does this collar do? That was weird. Oh, it turns out there's a switch. And then we get a coin. But wait! It's not just a coin! Ta-da! It's a key! Cool. So, now to go solve a puzzle. And just for... <laughs> I don't want to say speedrunner's sake, but just for uh, convenience for next time... Come over here and unlock this door. And whenever you try to leave this after getting the collar and using the dog whistle, you can get rid of the dog whistle. And there we go. We are now back in, I guess you would call this home base. Now, I need to run. And let me... See if I remember the layout of this. No, 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 no. I don't need to go here. Shoot. Ah. Okay, here we go. I was supposed to go in here. Ah, just uh, There's so, so many things I'm thinking of that I don't need to do yet. 
but I need to do the other things now and I'm just not thinking properly. Whoa, hey now. And these zombies are actually really easy to avoid. You just need to run past them. Okay. Here is a crimson head. Only at this point of the game when you have the imitation of key does he get up. Yeah. A, a lot faster getting up than just a regular zombie. Than a regular walker or a shambler, whatever you want to call them. They are fast and they hurt. So now we have something new to deal with. And that was actually a pretty clever way to introduce the Crimson Heads. Because you're not supposed to know about them yet. Uh oh. Oh no! What did I do? I just wanted the key! Oh, fine. You can have this. I want it anyway. Oh. It's a good thing this trap is a sucker. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of Saw 5. That tr those traps were... Those were silly. That movie was terrible. But, uh, I think we made a bit of progress. We got another key. Got to figure out where to use it, so we'll actually save that for the next episode. Uh, so, next time on Resident Evil Remake. I'm going to start using the voice next time. Uh, we're going to go unlock some doors, because everybody loves that. See you guys next time.